We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180, 1230, KGEO, 1410, KERI, 1000 KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and across this great nation on the Internet on KNUCMedia.com. We are very fortunate to have as our guest, and he's uh, consented to stay in another segment, George Allen, former senator and governor of the great state of Virginia. So, George, we were talking a little bit about... Um, Actually, Washington, and you you wanted to uh, tell us a little bit about the senators that uh, uh, and the Senate races and what you think is going yeah. to happen. I think it looks pretty good at this point, as uh, as of today, and uh, I've been keeping track of these since right in the beginning. And and the Republicans to take over a majority are going to need at least six. That's assuming we don't lose any. And, and uh, I think on defense, Mitch McConnell looks like he's uh, picking up ground and should win in Kentucky. I think we'll ultimately win in Georgia. Kansas has become become a little uh, convoluted. The governor's race isn't helping much, but even Sam Brownback's doing a little better. So I think the way I look at it, we'll keep all those. And uh, most of the states that are battleground states are energy-producing states, and they know this Obama administration wants to outlaw coal, and they're against oil and gas and so the states like west virginia we're going to win west virginia that's joining us here in virginia and that's a coal is their party even though they're mostly democrats but the republican will win there same with montana south dakota i think the republican will win there too and then you get other states that are breaking the right way that are energy states in particular are uh, alaska and louisiana although louisiana may go into overtime with the way they run their elections there uh yeah that's a goofy. Get 50 percent yeah is colonel and manis does he have any chance do you think in louisiana who's that colonel manis he was the second republican running we had him no. on the show no, well, I don't want to say no one has a chance. It looks like it'll be Landrew versus Cassidy, but he, he, he'll get a, he'll get support, and that support will probably uh, assure that it doesn't get over fifty. No candidate will get over fifty percent because he's running strong enough. Right. Uh, but then after that, the top two vote getters and polls show that Cassidy and Landrew are the top two vote getters. So. And then they'll have a runoff in December there. North Carolina, just in the last few days, is trending towards a Republican. Uh, same with Arkansas. And uh, Iowa's, uh, uh, this Joni Ernst, I think, she's doing great. And she's, uh, I think she'll be helped by Governor Branstad, who's running for re-election, and he's just trouncing his opponent. Colorado, uh, the Beaupre race for governor, I think, is also helping in the Senate race. And so I think that Colorado looks good. Uh, Michigan doesn't look good. New Hampshire's getting close. Virginia, it may tighten up if there's a big tsunami. So I, the way I look at it is that folks are, with the, President Obama's approval ratings in these states, and most of these states are, are 40 percent or lower, uh, and then you have what you know, his unpopularity. Their energy states. There's, you know, the, what has been going on in with ISIS, with the Ukraine, uh, Ebola. All of this is exacerbating people's uh, disapproval of, of Washington. And in fact, Democrats are distancing themselves from President Obama in their in their races. The only thing that I think is holding back Republicans is that there's still no theme. There's no agenda to expand our, our coalition of exactly. new people, whether they're young or new allies. Uh, I, I wish they had a, an agenda or an idea for people, ideas for people to vote for rather than against. And uh, I think if they did have such an agenda and the, the saying, or, here's what we're going to do to make our ta tax policies more fair, less complicated and create more jobs or rein in these these unreg I think we need to regulate the regulators the cost of regulations on manufacturers especially small manufacturers per employee per year is $34,000 a year for these are manufacturers with less than 50 employees and it's it's high it's about 19,000 per employee for large manufacturers per year but all of that har harms our, our country i also think that if they had a positive energy agenda uh, the only positive we have generally is we're for the the, the keystone xl pipeline uh with it but I, I also think they ought to be allowing states like virginia to produce off our coast and share in the royalties if we so desire so there's there's things that we can uh, ideas 
that can motivate people to be voting for us. And I think we'd do better if we did. But this election, uh, there's just a lot of motivation and antipathy towards the inaction or the harmful actions out of Washington from everything from the Obamacare to energy policies to taxes to really overburdensome duplicate duplicative regulations. So uh, I'm optimistic. It looks like the, the tide's turning our way. More importantly, though, is is it's not just to say the Republicans are in the majority. When you have a majority, do something. Do something that is is helping create more jobs for young people who are graduating from college these days because the job market is awful. And I, I think we ought to unleash our, our young people so that they can get a job and be inventors and creators and, and entrepreneurs rather than having to live back home after graduating from college. Exactly. We're having a conversation with former senator and governor of the great state of Virginia, George Allen. George, you did a great segue there for me. Uh, I know you're involved with the National Association of Manufacturing, and you were talking about, I guess, the the average uh, cost of federal regulations on on businesses is 19564 But what amazed me was the figure I saw for small businesses under 50, the cost yeah. is thirty four thousand six hundred and change a year. Yep. Fig- and this is a study of regulations as of twenty twelve, and looking at what the cost of regulations for for an average business, it's about nine, a little over nine thousand dollars per employee. But if they're manufacturing, the cost, the average cost for a manufacturing firm is is over nineteen thousand per employee per year. The smaller manufacturers, those with less than 50 employees, they don't get the advantage of the economies of scale. And in fact, their their cost per employee is over $34,000 a year. And those are, those are, you know, 59% of those costs come from environmental regulatory compliance. And now, on top of all of this, they're coming up with these EPA regulations, the greenhouse gases. The next is ozone uh, regulations, and all of these are are just so so burdensome, so costly that it makes it hard for business to conduct business here in the United States. It ultimately will increase the cost of any product or any any operation. It's not as if these costs are are just eaten. They have to be passed on, but it, it ends up losing jobs here in America to other countries that don't don't impose these burdens. I'm not in the. I'm co-chairman, by the way, of the National Association of Manufacturers Competitiveness Initiative, and it's not as if we're opposed to any regulations. You do have to have some regulations. They need to be reasonable. They need to be focused on what the what the uh, goal or mission may be. But we don't need triplicative uh, regulations and such burdens. And, and in fact, regulations, in my view, ought to be reviewed periodically, say every 10 years, to determine if, if those regulations are still worthwhile. And if so, is there a less costly, less burdensome way of achieving the goals of those regulations? But what they do is just compound them. And then as far as our, our republic is concerned, these regulations are, are being imposed by unelected, unaccountable bureaucracies. Our energy policies in our country ought to be decided by elected representatives of the people. And theoretically, you could vote them out or vote them in office for those who have the, the productive or positive policies that the voters would like. But you have no recourse against these these bureaucracies that just stay there and just keep compounding these regulations in such a way that uh, our existing regulatory system is just so unnecessarily inefficient, burdensome, uh, in, in trying to achieve whatever their object, objectives should be. So we need common sense regulatory reform, and I think most Americans would agree with that. Well, another issue that I think is going to be driving up the uh, cost to employers is going to be Obamacare, either yeah. give, giving the employees benefits, paying the fine, or and they're not going to know they, ha- they have a fine many times until 18 to 24 months after the fines and the audits. So it's going to be really damaging to uh, small, too large employers over the next two years. Yeah, well, that's already that's already hitting, and uh, and manufacturers have been reporting how these these costs are are hurting them. There's no question about it. In fact, the Obama administration keeps you know the, a lot of these the Obamacare kicked in after the 2012 election, 
and uh, the, all they had before the 2012 election was you know, pre-existing conditions being covered and kids could stay on their parents' policies till age 26. Now these, the fines or taxes are, are being imposed. Then on employers, uh, the, the mandate on employers, or if you have 50 employees or, or more, you have to have it. They have to provide health insurance. That has now been delayed until after these elections. But they, the, the other thing that the Obamacare has done is that you, if your employee works less than 30 hours a week, then they're not a full-time employee. So what's happening with a lot of businesses, especially those with, with very narrow profit margins, the same that the restaurant business is they're making a lot of employees become part-time employees. So that employee, that man or woman, has to find another job to make ends meet. And well, it's, George, uh, George. It's, it's causing uh, a lot, much more harm than good, and it needs to be reformed with a patient-based approach, where whether it's health savings accounts or letting small businesses pool together and buy insurance across state lines. We need more competition in well, health insurance. I want to let you know, this is my business. I'm an employee benefits consultant, ah. and, and I do have answers for those employers. We can help them eliminate all the rules, the regulations, the requirements, the fines, and the penalties. There's a lot of neat strategies out there, and it's just getting to those employers to explain it. Well, and this, and this commercial was brought to you by... Clay Kerner. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's good. And, and, and that, you know, you look at the look at all the competition there is for car insurance and life insurance and, and property insurance. Uh, you see all the ads on TV and hear them all on the radio. Uh, for for health insurance, there's just not very much competition. Exactly. And I'd like to see patients. Uh, I'm one who's an advocate of the health savings accounts, where where people actually care how much it costs and. Uh, shop around for for the best price and a lot of times you don't need to go to see a a doctor just for a sore throat or an earache it'll cure itself but a lot of folks you ask them they'll complain oh my copay was a hundred dollars i said well how much was the whole bill well i don't know i said well you you ought to find out they say well insurance paid for it well (laughs) you know somebody's paying for it it's like if you go to a grocery store and you say get whatever you want in your cart and we'll we'll pay for it People aren't going to look at the unit price, but if sure. you're, you go to a grocery store like we do, you, know, you look at, all right, is the store brand, you know, a better value than than the name brand? And exactly. You, you look at for value, and that's, sure. I think, the way it ought to be in, in healthcare as well. Yeah, George, we're going to have to leave it at that. George, can we have you back? I would love to have you back. We, we had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for the time. Well, I, I'm glad you all are taking care of business there, and <laughs> and. Albuquerque, as well as obviously your home base in the Bakersfield area where Buck Owens is from. So, yeah, I'd be happy to uh, return if you'll let me. We would love to. We'll be back in a few moments on Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio News Talk 1180.